Now you come, we come to the question of when we start to unravel those distortions, those adhesions, the shortnesses, the kind of felty scar tissue arrangement that happens after trauma, um, the kinds of patterns that are shaped by the psychology into the body, all of those things. So now we're going to come and say, I don't know whether we're going to do yoga or we're going to do training or we're going to do stuff on a roller or we're going to do body work, any of those things that go in to change the fascial system. How is that going to proceed and is that going to be painful? The, I have a fairly complex relationship to this word called pain. So let's just define pain first. Pain is sensation accompanied by the motor intention to withdraw. If you're not trying to get away from it, it isn't pain. It's just sensation. And that varies from person to person and situation to situation and day to day. If I've had three cappuccinos before I come in for my session, you give me this amount of pressure, I'm going to report that as painful. If I come in having drunk my chamomile tea or whatever it is that keeps me calm and you give me that same amount of pressure, I won't report that as painful. Pain is sensation accompanied by the motor intention to withdraw. And I look here. This is where I first see, right on the edge of the eyes, before they've even said no or that's too much or that's okay, I can take it because a lot of people are in that kind of no pain, no gain kind of thing. So go right ahead, get right into my shoulder. I want, I want to feel the pain because I want to get the benefit. The pain and the benefit are not directly related. Pain is a condition. Pain is the motor intention to withdraw accompanying the sensation. So if you understand that my scraping my fists across your chest is going to result in a more open breath, you will take much more of that sensation and you won't report it as pain. But when you first come to me and I put my fists in your chest and I'm going to tear the fascia off your, that's what it's going to feel like, tear the fascia off your sternum, which is a place where it very, very commonly gets stuck down both biomechanically and emotionally. If I come in and move that, there are sensations associated with that. There's going to be a burning. The burning is from the free nerve endings that are stuck in between the fascial layers. So when I get the fascial layers to start to move on each other, it stimulates these free nerve endings that were kind of bridging that gap. And that will result in a feeling of tearing. You don't like the word tearing. We prefer the word melting. But in point of fact, if you go in there physiologically, it is a tearing. It is a tearing of the connections between the tissues. But it's a good tearing because it will result in motion between those two surfaces. So can you feel that pain when it's going? Yes. Can that be experienced as pain? Yes. Can you, with some training, with some experience, Stop regarding that as pain and just feel it as sensation. Yes, those of you who've been in yoga know that. You get into, what do they call it, that sweet sensation, sweet soreness. It's painful. Come on, let's be, admit it. Uh, when you first go into downward dog and you haven't been in downward dog somewhere in your calves or in your hamstrings or in your butt, you're going to feel a pulling, which if you go deeply into the pose, you could call pain. If you go deeply into training, and you come up against your physiological limits, you're going to come up against this thing that we call pain. There is no way around that. You can't extend yourself beyond your current capabilities without going into the unknown. And very often the sensations that you get in the unknown are going to get reported to you as pain. I am not personally in the no pain, no gain category. I know rolfers, people who work in my thing, that every motion that they do on the body is painful and that they think that that's part of the whole deal. I don't. There is one, uh, let me do this this way. There are three types of pain. There really are three types of pain. There's pain coming into the body. I stub my toe. I cut my arm. That's pain coming into the body. There's pain stored in the body. Pain stored in the body is often not felt as pain. 
It's felt as fatigue, it's felt as I can't do that, it's felt as just incapacity, but you don't often feel the pain you're storing in the body, you arrange your body so you don't feel that pain. So sometimes when you come into training that requires you to do something different, a yoga pose, an exercise, or you go into body work and somebody opens that tissue, the pain that's stored in the body comes out. So that's the third kind of pain, is pain leaving the body. I am way willing for people to go through the pain leaving the body, because as it leaves, it leaves energy, awareness, and function in its wake. So you do want to take the pain in the body and have it come out. That pain leaving the body, I can give you an analogy. The pain that you feel just before you tell the truth, you've been lying to your spouse, you've been lying to your boss, you've been lying to your parents about this, that, or the other thing, and now you're about to tell the truth. You know it's going to feel better on the other side, but there's this ah, pain of actually bringing this thing up and bringing it out because you don't know what's actually going to happen, how it's going to be received. But it is useful pain because after you have done that, space, psychic space opens up, bodily space opens up, the space for movement opens up. So that kind of pain leaving the body, I am really um, okay, more than okay with, I am in favor of. And when you have a traumatic area in the body, when a bone has been broken, when you have a psychological trauma to a body, when an organ has been traumatized, there will be pain stored in that. And I believe that you have to feel that pain on the way out. I don't believe that you can get traumatic pain out of the body without feeling that pain as part of the leaving process. Again, that can be really disturbing, really upsetting for the client. It can be very emotional for the client. But it's really important that they go through that process and that they we're all, I don't want to get too philosophical here, but we're all storing a whole bunch of pain, not only your own personal pain from your own personal traumas and whatever happened in your life from your birth on out, but you know what? We, as collectively, as humans, hold all the trauma that has happened to humans over the ages. I don't know if that seems like too far out an idea. I'm not talking about reincarnation here as a specificity. I'm just saying we have a legacy of brutality, a legacy of uncivilized behavior, a legacy of treating women incredibly badly, a um, legacy of treating children badly, a legacy of cruelty and pain that comes down through human history. And although we think of this century as the most violent, read Steven Pinker, we actually are, personal violence is going down, we are becoming a more peaceful society as time goes on. And Part of that is to take the collective pain that we have inside and bring it outside and body movement, manual therapy, strange kinds of exercises. These are things that really not only work on a personal level, they start to work on a collective level. And I think that's really important. I don't know if this went too far out there on a limb, but the, I really do believe that the job of personal trainers is to lessen the collective pain of humanity by getting some of that stuff out.